It is wry to think about the early 2010s prediction about the internet being our gateway out of climate disaster. Now, roughly 10 years later, our internet services, data centers, artificial intelligence, and the constant streaming of live videos and games contribute a significant part to global carbon emissions. The internet, as the world's largest coal-powered machine, it's on par with the shipping industry or the aviation industry and emits about 2 to 3 percent of the world's carbon. We're not just talking about energy and electricity and CO2, but we actually have to also acknowledge and think about the internet as needing raw materials, natural resources, land, labor. This is a um, very enmeshed system. Fibers Reassemble Lab number three, Natural Intelligence, explored the possibilities for alternative internet infrastructures based on ecological ethics. How do we imagine? How do we articulate, practice, and connect initiatives towards a fossil-free internet? And how can design, creative coding, and artistic research practices contribute to fundamentally adapting our technological demands to natural cycles? The multidisciplinary mix of creatives, technologists, social entrepreneurs work towards a more sustainable internet. How to understand or engage with natural intelligence? Natural intelligence means that we look for natural cycles and patterns in nature. So the cycle of the sun or wind patterns or water power to connect that with our technological systems. Throughout the lab, the question of natural intelligence and the low carbon internet was explored within four research areas. Approaching the notion of natural intelligence, I think, is a really multi-layered uh, uh, question. I think it needs to be an invitation to in interrogate our own rhythm, or how we navigate the ecology around us, um, our relationship with nature, but also uh, our relationship with the tech that we use, our relationship with natural rhythms like time, but also our relationships with larger economic systems like capitalism. So I think with uh, natural intelligence, it's quite interesting to look at um, what systems or logics already exist in, for instance, ecosystems or in ecology, and what it's possible to use this logic as a metaphor to apply that to other systems. But I think what we really need to start with is understanding proportions, right? understanding scales. For example, am I fighting against a, an industrial scale level of pollution and how I can contribute to unveiling that amount of contribution, of holding people accountable for, for some of the inequalities in consumption and in the production of technology or energy exhaustive machinery in a very broad sense. How can we create an intersectional mapping of the various concepts and communities and their strategies and views on how network infrastructure's impacts could be lowered? There is a dissonance between what our goals are in achieving in technology and where are we standing with, with the climate right now. So we, those two seem to go separate ways uh, right now. And it's because of the general public doesn't understand fully the impact of technology and how it's actually their actions online, how, it, how they impact the environment because it's not tangible enough. So I believe in investing in digital literacy. For me it's about we need to understand uh, what we are consuming and uh, what we are using. From there on we can develop values that we need or put certain thoughts central. How can we implement accessible personal interventions and design solutions to the ongoing environmental emergency? One example of an intervention and growing network is Solar Protocol. 
Solar Protocol is a planetary scale network of solar power servers, um, each stewarded by volunteers around the world. So in the Solar Protocol network, we rely on the sun's cycle and therefore the distribution of natural energy um, as a form of natural rather than artificial intelligence. And we use this to program and automate how the network operates. For the lab, a solar server on the roof of Amsterdam Nord's creative melting pot, A-Lab, was installed. With the launch of this cell, Amsterdam became part of the global network of the project Solar Protocol. Another example of an alternative approach is offered by Low Tech magazine. Their project stems from a degrowth perspective by differing their images, an image compression technique popular in the 1990s using default typefaces and running the website on a single solar charged battery, which at the time of recording stands at 59% not charging. How can we find new modes of collaboration around an internet based on ecological ethics? How can we build bridges between existing practices and connect design and critical thinking with policy making? As a member of the European Parliament, I check what the Commission does. The Commission has two proposals. A Europe fit for the digital age, so how are we streamlining the digital transition? And the European Green Deal, how are we going to stop the crisis that we're in? But the question remains, how can we make Europe both digital and green? Because we see that they're not really, you know, talking with each other. If we have all these decentralized alternative networks and different initiatives and people in different fields making this effort or this endeavor towards low carbon internet, how do we actually build bridges between them? Varia believes technology shouldn't be the exclusive domain of specialists. It affects everyone and should enable rather than preclude diverse ways of living. Another learning for me as well was the invitation to slow down, that uh, there is a mindset of unlimited extraction that governs a lot of interactions in our life, the way we work, the way we consume online media, the way we navigate the web, our expectation of the web. It's really important to move away from that one takeaway from the lab is that infrastructures could also be something that we care about, something that, is, that becomes cultural. Which ways of futuring will help us to steer towards a desirable, fossil-free future? What if ecological values were the main driver of global markets? If market prices were defined by an element's relation to other actors in an ecosystem, instead of solely human demand, if shareholders were careholders. Let's imagine and build. I wanted to talk about the solar punks. Some of their most strong work is actually in a manifesto where they talked about the need to take optimism back. It was taken away from us and now we're gonna take it back. What does it mean to learn from, adapt to natural cycles, and how to imagine, articulate, practice and connect initiatives towards a more sustainable internet.